Hey there, Lightroom has brand new features that are intimidating to some and super helpful for other people. If you're freaked out by color grading in Lightroom, I have some tips and tricks and great news to share with you. Hey there, I'm Caitlin James. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we love to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in in a little behind the scenes of our everyday life. So today I'm gonna to talk about something that left a lot of people in our KJ Education Facebook group freaking out the day it was released. P.S. If you are not a part of the KJ Education Facebook group, there's about 9,000-ish photographers in there that are amazing. They're encouraging and complimentary and they help one another without being negative and rude. So you should join. There's a link below to join. You don't have to be a student. You, can ju you just have to be a kind, nice person that genuinely wants to grow. That's the only restrictions that we have. So anyway, join that Facebook group. But also, um, I, I wanted to speak to the problem people are freaking out over color grading in Lightroom. The day this was released, this new update to Lightroom was released, people were losing their minds in this group. And I have to admit, Ty and I exchanged some texts. Uh, a friend of mine also texted me like, what the heck is going on with Lightroom? And it was a little intimidating at first, but then I realized after doing some research, after editing some, after trying out this new feature in Lightroom, I actually realized that Lightroom has given us, Adobe has given us a huge gift because this new color grading feature in Lightroom is actually better than what we had before, but you have to understand why it's better, what it has to offer, and how you can actually use the techniques that I've been teaching in the past for years. You can still use those options. It just looks a little different. Side note, for those of you who may have no idea what I'm talking about, every year there are updates to Lightroom, but there's once a year where there's a pretty significant update that comes out. And so that happened this past September. I teach in our KJ Consistency course, um, KJ All Access, when I do editing demos, I am constantly encouraging photographers to try split toning. It's kind of one of the secret sauces to my skin tones. So split toning in Lightroom with this new update was completely um, renamed and restructured and redesigned. It looks nothing like what it used to. And so at first glance, it feels like my secret sauce that I've been teaching for forever um, was completely gone. That's not the case, however. So I wanted to explain what this huge shift was all about because for someone who doesn't understand the power of split toning, this probably didn't even affect you. But for someone who uses it every day when I'm in my office, uh, this, this was huge. So that is a little backstory on what has actually changed in Lightroom. Let's dive in and talk about what has changed, what is different, and why we don't need to be freaked out about it. Instead, we should be excited. For those of you who have no idea why this panel in uh, Lightroom is beneficial, I'm gonna explain that first. So basically, um, we all know that you can adjust temperature here, right? You can adjust temperature, but look at how that temperature is applying. It's applying over the entire image. So the warmth of the sunlight, the green grass in the background, the foreground, the shadows, the highlights, the midtones, everything is changing and being affected by this white balance adjustment. Okay. So, and, and same with tint, right? So same with tint. If you were to do that slider back and forth, I'll, I'll just show you it's affecting every single part of the image. The powerful part of using split toning, which is now known as color grading, uh, is that you are in control of changing the temperature and the tone of different parts of the image. And so what has changed in this new update? Well, I think it's a great update. I'm pleased with it. I'm excited to share with you um, how I am using it differently. And I know that as I continue to edit and continue to shoot, I'm gonna learn more and more about color grading uh, that I um, didn't know before. And so this has only been out for a few weeks, um, but I can share with you the benefits of why I think this new color grading option is great. So when you first open your new version of Lightroom, you will probably see color grading um, show itself like this. And in my opinion, um, this is not my favorite view. I would rather see them individually. So you can click right here. And you can see um, over here, if you were to click here, it's, it sh uh, shifts over to midtones. You click again, it shifts over to highlights, but you can also click up here as well. This is um, kind of a global adjustment and I do not use it. I don't use it because I've never had a need for it, but I might in the future, you never know. Um, I don't fully understand it, like how it would benefit me versus doing what I'm doing in each of the three sections already. So I, overall, I'm not worried about global. I'm not gonna talk through that. 
if you have knowledge about why global is better than uh, adjusting manually the midtones, highlights, and shadows, then leave it in the comments, leave a link. I'd love to learn more. So um, I'm going to click shadows here. The reason why I like viewing it this way and having more control is because I have found um, in a lot of ways that it helps me understand new parts of Lightroom to break it down and simplify it um, in a way that doesn't look like this um, and by not making an overall adjustment. So shadows here, um, when you open up shadows like this, you may have your arrow turned up like this and it looks like, well, I, gosh, do I have to type in? Because I, I teach people to find their hue and their saturation manually, not to do the color picker, um, not to kind of drag and try to figure out exactly um, what looks best by like selecting different parts of the image. I just think that is so hard to maintain and so hard to choose. So it used to be um, that you would see a kind of a range of sliders and I showed people where my sliders normally landed. And if you want that view back, you just have to open up there it goes. That's what we're used to seeing. You have to open that up um, so you can see this view. And so this is where your traditional split toning, um, this is what it looked like, except you used to have highlights above with two lines, hue and saturation, and then shadows below with two lines. Well, now you have shadows, midtones, which is new, and highlights, and they're all displayed in separate areas like this. Now you can see them all together here, but you don't have the option of opening up the arrow and having this slider like what we're used to. And so I still prefer to see it this way. Um, in the past, I have taught that highlights have more impact than shadow, and I do truly believe that. And um, the reason for that, I, especially in my work, is when you look at this image as a whole, I shoot pretty wide open. I shoot in bright scenarios. I like bright backgrounds. I like glowy light. So whenever you are choosing to shoot in more of a bright, setting, you're going to have more highlights than you are dark patches of an image. Um, and so I'm actually going to click on over to highlights and show you how I would use color grading now. So let's look at this image. This image um, has the pop that I like. We're good with pop, which I teach everybody. Get your pop first, then get your color straightened out because adjusting pop is adjusting the color whether you like it or not. When you open up the shadows, the colors are going to look different. If you're going to um, open up the exposure and brighten the exposure on the image, your colors will look slightly different. So trying to figure out your color before you're figuring out your pop is actually working backwards and it's going to be very confusing. So get your pop set first, get your, your contrast, your highlights, your whites, you know, that's what I mean by pop. Get that set first and then worry about fixing your color. Overall, um, this is this image is in a good place, and I, I know that it looks a little gray, looks a little blue, um, but I also know that I don't want to fix that with my temperature. I want to fix that with split toning. So, um, sorry, let me rephrase that. Color grading. I'm still not used to that. I will get used to it with time. All right, so we're going to come down here. Let's say like 35 um, is the hue. It's right in between orange before you get too much in like the golden greens. Uh, you know, I, that's a really safe spot to be. Um, and let's actually do like 20%, okay? So I'm gonna actually bump this up. I wanna show you how this is affecting certain parts of the image, okay? So we are adding this hue at this saturation to the highlights of the image only. I think that looks much better. We're getting a little bit warmer. Let's go on to shadows, which I don't think in this image, especially in this image, it's not gonna make as big of an impact. I'm gonna do 12% and um, we'll do 35 as well. You can change, you can change the hue of what you're adjusting and color grading. It doesn't always have to be the same. Um, and I actually think that can be really powerful in certain scenarios where maybe the midtones of the image really need to be adjusted. Midtones are basically, let me explain this. Highlights are the brightest part of the image. Shadows are going to be your darker parts of the image, and midtones are everything else in between. There are actually a lot of midtones. Um, and so the fact that Lightroom has given us the capability to adjust that in between, that midtone area, is actually really pow it's a powerful tool, tool for us. So in this image, because my images are so bright, a lot of times I don't find um, that, see, okay, see how this adjustment, what is it adjusting? Pants, the shadows of her hair a little bit of the shadows of him, and a little bit overall, but basically it's it's not a huge impact. So I'm not worried about shadows as much, but let's come over here and let's do like, um, let's say, we'll just keep it the same, 35 for the hue. Now look how much this adjusts. 
midtones are a huge, huge impact over the whole image because there are more midtones than there are highlights and there are shadows. So the fact that we can change just the color of midtones is fascinating and we've never had that control like this before. Um, and I love that. So I think that is a huge upgrade. Um, I'm going to increase this just a little bit. I feel like we have more control here. I feel like if you have an image where you think, gosh, something is just off, you can test out instead of just basically having control over the highlights, you now have this secondary tool where you say, okay, well, maybe my highlights aren't catching that really, really weird green tint. Maybe the midtones have more of that and I need to adjust midtones more intensely than I am adjusting my highlights. So we just have so much more freedom. The other cool thing that I love, and I'm not going to get into blending and balance because to be truthful, I, I have not played around with that enough to really feel like I have um, advice to offer, but I will say that I'm loving the luminance slider. So I'm loving the luminance slider because I love that it kind of gives me, in my opinion, it gives me another kind of secondary way to get a little extra pop. So if I was to say, okay, let's increase this like 15%, um, you, see, you can see a little pop, but here, let me show you. Do you see what the, what is happening here? So it's giving me the ability to take the brightness and the darkness of the midtones up and down, and that's just a very different way to get a little bit extra pop um, than just using the tonal curve. And so um, that's something we've never had before. And that's not something that's just exclusive to midtones. It's actually um, a part of the highlights as well, which is fascinating. So if you want to shoot and you want to mute um, you want to mute your highlights a little bit more, maybe you're more film-like, look at that adjustment. It's very, it's fascinating. And um, I never knew that I would like a new tool in Lightroom until I started playing around with this and I thought, man, like I, I think this is great. I, I'm not intimidated by it. I'm not worried about it. I actually think it's a great improvement in the system. So overall, I am still approaching split toning, color grading, uh, the same way that I always have. I just feel like I have more control and more options. And so I hope showing you this um, is allowing you to see just how great this up update is and that we didn't lose anything. We really just gained a whole bunch of new stuff and that's awesome. So if you've always been a split toning lover, you're gonna love color grading and I would highly recommend getting to know your mid-tone options and playing around with luminance a little bit um, and figure out how it can enhance the style that you already love or how it can help you achieve a style that maybe you've never achieved before. So uh, if you have an image where the, the skin tones look blue or gray or they're just dead and lifeless, you need color grading in your life. All right, so I hope that that demonstration and that little tutorial will allow you to feel more empowered and equipped and excited to use color grading in Lightroom um, instead of feeling maybe a little sad and intimidated uh, that so much has changed because really we have so many great options now that we've never had before. So I'm glad you tuned in. Make sure you subscribe so we'll do other videos about how Lightroom is changing, how it's affecting my editing in the future. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.